you women out there, y'all petty, man. Hey, LeBron, you 100% right on these girls hating on Caitlin Clark. Y'all petty, girls. <laughs> I expect men to be petty because we're the most insecure group in the world. Oh, you are. Y'all should be thanking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters, all the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. Don't be petty like dudes. Listen, what she's accomplished, give her her flowers. Stop being petty, all you women out there. She got y'all ass charters. She bringing all y'all this money to the table, but y'all being petty like dudes. LeBron, you are 100% right. Y'all girls, stop being petty. Kayla Clark, thank you for bringing all that money and shine to the WNBA. Well, they're going to hate you even more now. Hey, they, this, they can't do anything to me. They're going to hate you, though. Hey, they, can't, they can hate on me, but they better be. But that mailman better be in my damn house the first and the 15th for another, for another year. For another year. Well, let, us, let us continue our discussion. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the liberal women in the mainstream liberal media and in the WNBA that are trying their best to tear down Caitlin Clark. Now, I don't understand why they would do this from a financial perspective, considering how uh, Caitlin Clark is essentially single-handedly saving the WNBA, okay? Nobody really gave a damn about the WNBA until uh, she was drafted, and now... Uh, the WNBA is getting a lot more viewers. It's getting a lot more attention. It's a lot more relevant than it has ever been because of the star power that she brings to the league. Now, with star power uh, comes a lot of hate and jealousy, okay? And the typical suspects are hating on Kaylin Clark, basically claiming that, well, she's popular because she's white and she's straight. Essentially, what they're saying is that uh, the reason why the league wasn't as popular as it is now with Caitlin Clark is because of racism and homophobia, right? That is what was holding in the league back. And Caitlin Clark being white and straight is the reason or part of the reason why she has become so popular and why the league is now benefiting is because they have a white straight savior right and again this is the argument that was essentially made by Sonny Holston on the view with the cackling hands take a look in Harlem when I was five years old uh -huh. so I, I remember loving the game and the game not necessarily loving women back right at all and, at all and um the WNBA started in 1996 uh -huh. first games played in 1997 it's 2024, and we're just really yes. now talking about yes. it. And so if Caitlin Clark is the vehicle that will bring this sport that I have loved so much and yeah. so long to little five-year-old girls playing in Harlem, I say yes, bravo. Yeah. I have no problem yeah. with that. With that being said, I do think that there is a thing called pretty privilege. There is a thing called white privilege. There is a thing called tall privilege. And we have to acknowledge that. And so um, the, part of it is about race, because if you think about the Brittany Griners of the world, you know, why did she have to go to play in Russia? Because they wouldn't pay her. Because they wouldn't yeah, pay her. They wouldn't yet, pay not because pay she was black, league. but because they didn't believe well, well, in, that, in the WNBA. This is, this is part of my point. So yeah. now, you know, she, Caitlin Clark is bringing this money, these sponsorships, we hope, we hope into the league and other players will benefit yeah. from it but i do think that she is more relatable to more people because she's white because she's attractive and unfortunately there still is that stigma of against the lgbtq plus community 70 percent of the wnba is black they're a third of the players are in the lgbtq plus community and we have to do something about that stigma um in in, in this country i i think that people have a problem with with basketball playing women that are lesbians. Who cares? They are great athletes. Well, you can't tell a lesbian unless she yeah. tells you she's a lesbian. Yeah. Because they're pretty, it's not like you look over and go, oh, there's one. They're pretty, no. You they're, don't know. They're pretty, they're pretty open in the league, and I'm, I'm happy that in they're the open league, in the league. In the league, yes, but... but yeah, so I don't think that Whoopi realized that she was accidentally pushing back against Sonny Holston. Maybe she actually was because Whoopi actually said some things that made sense as uh, Sonny Holston was spewing her racism and homophobia narrative about why the WNBA uh, wasn't as popular as it is now with Caitlin Clark. Because when Sonny brought up Brittany Griner as an example of 
I guess, bigotry, right, um, in regards to why she had to go to Russia to play. Um, well, the real reason is not because she's black, okay, as Whoopi correctly pointed out, but Whoopi was incorrect to say that, well, she went to Russia because she wasn't getting paid enough in the WNBA. No, she went to Russia because she was greedy. <laughs> That's why, okay, because uh, in my opinion, you are paid what you're worth here in the United States of America. The market has determined that WNBA players should only get paid, what, maybe a few hundred thousand dollars a year if you're a top player? And quite honestly, <laughs> considering how low the league's revenues are compared to the NBA, uh, and the fact that they're being subsidized by the NBA in order to survive, it wouldn't exist without the men's league. I mean, hey, a few hundred thousand dollars a year might be too much, right? Again, these players are pretending that seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year is unfair. When I'm like, nah, that's very fair, right? That's very fair for the amount of revenue that your sport brings in. It is what it is, okay? So she went to Russia because of greed, okay? She didn't go to Russia because he wasn't being paid enough. She has sponsorships. Brittany Griner was well off before going to Russia. Uh, she just wanted more money. She made her own decision. But again, if there's so much hate and bigotry from the United States of America and black women are treated so terribly, then how the hell did Brittany Griner get back? Brittany Griner got better treatment than the straight white Marine Paul Willen, right? We gave away a Russian arms dealer nicknamed the Merchant of Death <laughs> in exchange for a black lesbian woman, right? A WNBA player. But yet these women are trying to pretend like black women are treated so bad, right? Because their race or their sexuality or their gender. It is ridiculous. It is nonsense. And that's what pisses me off about these people always complaining so much. Only one group of people, right? The people with the most powerful Infinity Stone of Wokeness get treated better than black women do in this country, okay? Black women in this country get treated better than almost anybody else. But yet, but yet, they try to pretend like they're so oppressed. But again, that's the playbook. The better treatment you get, the more you cry victimhood, right? And then you pretend like you're being oppressed in order to continue to get the benefits, okay, of this oppressed status. This is what they do. And it's just so funny to me because you have corporate America, DEI, right, anti-racism. That is quite literally a subsidy to black women. Every DEI leader in corporate America, for the most part, is a black woman. They've created a whole department, okay, that causes nothing but hate and division within corporate America, within our government, literally as a gift to black women, right? Black women that get advanced, useless degrees, okay, because they go to school, they get these silly degrees, right? Like, for example, a gender studies degree or some African history degree, right? Something they really can't do anything with. But all of a sudden, oh, they can get jobs in DEI and diversity. Again, who benefits more from DEI initiatives than black women? Nobody. It is a gift to them. A whole gift. But again, these people claiming no pressure. Oh, well, nobody wanted to watch the league because because of black lesbians. <laughs> right. Again, it's <laughs> like Whoopi said. Nobody can tell if you're a lesbian unless you tell them. Right. Nobody really knows. Because I definitely had no clue what Kaylin Clark's sexuality was before all this, right? I just assumed that, I don't know, maybe she could be straight, maybe she's not. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. I had no idea she was straight, okay? I, I, I don't know at all. But again, apparently, according to people like Jamel Hill, okay, and Sonny Holston, race and sexuality is part of the reason why she's so popular. And that's problematic. Again, this is what Jamel Hill said. Kaitlyn Clark owes some of her worth as a marketable WNBA player to her race and sexuality. According to former ESPN host Jamel Hill, the Indiana Fever player took the country by storm the past year after setting all-time records for scoring during her senior season of college basketball and becoming the number one pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. Clark's success has since garnered massive media attention with thousands attending her games and millions watching from home. She also signed a lucrative $28 million Nike sponsorship deal shortly after graduation. 
However, the LA Times wrote Clark's success, quote, draws questions of race and equity. In a league comprised 70% of black players and nearly a third comprised of LGBTQ players. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here's the narrative being played up. Oh, well, it's not fair for the straight white woman <laughs> to get all this money, even though she's bringing in money to the league, right? Even though she's marketable, okay? Uh, it's not fair for her to get all this money and for the other players, mainly black lesbians, for them not to get money, right? Again, it's just, uh, it's frustrating. It really is. They do this every time. Quote, we would all be very naive if we didn't say race and her sexuality played a role in her popularity. The athletic writer Jamel Hill told the LA Times, quote, while so many people are happy for Caitlyn's success, including the players, this has had such an enormous impact on the game. There is a part of it that is a little problematic because of what it says about the worth and marketability of players who are already there. Yeah, I mean, they're not that marketable. But again, it's not because of their skin color. Because if their skin color has something to do with it, then we wouldn't have the most marketable uh, and profitable athletes in the world being people like LeBron James or Michael Jordan, right? I mean, the most popular, well-paid athletes in the world, a vast majority of them are black, okay? They're black. Well, why is that? It's because they happen to be at the top of their sports. Skin color does not have anything to do with your popularity overall. Now, again, would there be some people out there that's going to cheer on Caitlin Clark because she's white? Maybe, but I think that is a minority of people, right? I think the majority of people are cheering her on because of her skill, because of her personality, because of the way she plays the game. I have never seen a WNBA player that basically is like the women's version of Steph Curry, right? That's what she is. Steph Curry, pretty damn popular in the NBA, okay? And he's black, right? He's black. He's pretty popular. So you get a woman who basically plays like him and all of a sudden she's popular. Maybe it has something to do with the way she plays the game. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that she's very entertaining. Okay. And just something about the way she carries herself adds to that brand. And brands feel like they can make a lot of money off of that. The other WNBA players, I can't say there is entertaining to watch. Sorry. It is what it is. That's how capitalism works. Hill specifically called out brands like Nike for playing a part in ignoring more diverse players, arguing that, quote, black women are often erased from the picture. Again, so they're trying to pretend like this is something that is being done because of race, and that's just not true. I mean, listen, Nike is in the business of making money, right? They're going to sponsor whoever they feel can make them more money, okay? If they feel like they can make money off of an athlete, it doesn't matter what skin color they are all nike knows is that hey we see green right that's the only skin color that's the only color they really care about when it comes to these athletes green that's it that's it and with kaylin clark there's a whole lot of green there with all the other WNBA players that i can't really name off the top of my head not a whole lot of green right why because i can't really name them off the top of my head they're not household names not enough people watch the league. People don't care enough. But again, what really, really, really bothers me is the fact that this woman, Kaylin Clark, is single-handedly saving this league, okay? She's going to get a whole lot of these black women paid, but yet these people are still boohoo, whining, and complaining. They're not even smart enough to shut the hell up and to allow this woman to be successful so that the black women that you claim you care about so much can benefit, but no, they can't help but play the race card. They always want to play the race card no matter what. Again, it's sickening. Quote, there's plenty of room to highlight and celebrate Caitlin Clark's popularity while also discussing ways in which not to erase black women from a league that they have built and continue to build. Hill said, well, what have they built? What have they built? <laughs> right? I mean, what they built so far is an unprofitable league, a league that nobody gives a damn about. So again, they don't deserve to get paid just because they play or just because uh, they were a part of the league for the beginning. Nobody cares. That's not how this works. That's not how this works. Nicole Melton, co-director of the Laboratory for Inclusion and Diversity in Sports at the University of Massachusetts, also described Clark's popularity as pushing a comfortable image. Quote, Caitlin fits a very comfortable narrative for a lot of people in the United States, Melton said. She comes from the heartland. She's an amazing talent. She's also a white, straight woman, right? There's not a lot of things that would make 
people feel uncomfortable with that person being <laughs> successful. Wow, incredible stuff. Uh, the LA Times article followed similar comments from Las Vegas Aces Center Asia Wilson earlier this month when she suggested Clark's race is a factor in her popularity. Quote, I think it's a huge thing. I think a lot of people may say it's not about black and white, but to me it is, Wilson said. It really is because you can be top notch at what you are as a black woman, but yet maybe that's something that people don't want to see. Again, explain Serena Williams. Somebody please explain to me Serena Williams. How the hell did Serena Williams become one of the most popular tennis players in the world? And we're not just talking about among women. We're talking about among men and women. Period. How did she become one of the most popular tennis players in the world? Household name. And she's a black woman. According to these people, it, would, it should be impossible for that to happen. Shouldn't be possible. Again, these people make me sick. <laughs> they really do. I can't stand them. Wilson added, quote, they don't see it as marketable, so it doesn't matter how hard I work. It doesn't matter what we do as black women. We're going to be swept under the rug. That's why it boils my blood when people say it's not about race because it is. Yeah, I mean, well, if you are living life like that, seeing everything from a victimhood perspective, then you will forever be a victim. OK, and uh, at the end of the day, you know, these people, if they're not careful, they're going to ruin the best thing that ever happened to them because of hate and jealousy right that's what's happening they're hating on caitlin clark because she's white and <laughs> she's more popular than they are okay and to me it really is a damn shame that we're still having these silly conversations in this country when these people should just be grateful be grateful that WNBA is actually getting the attention that these women have been begging for but again because the attention is coming due to the fact that a white straight woman happens to be the most popular player in the WNBA is she just got into the league oh they're upset they're boohoo whining and crying okay well again I personally think that they're gonna end up ruining this right who knows maybe this could all be a part of the drama right to get more people to watch the WNBA but uh I just think they should be grateful and I think all this race hustling okay this uh boohoo whining and crying bigotry because this woman is more popular than all the other women in the WNBA I think it's silly but hey let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace